and tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Winter time was the worst. Where I live, during the darkest part of winter, sunset begins at 4 p.m. and the sun doesn't rise again until 8 a.m. And it is in those dark hours that I lose all control. Over time, however, this morning, amnesia became a daily occurrence. It began inconspicuously enough. I would wake up in my apartment not having remembered the night before. A feeling that, while unpleasant, wasn't altogether uncommon. And more worryingly, in almost every instance I would wake up in a different part of my apartment than where I had slept. My situation became even stranger as I noticed changes during the day that were clearly caused by my mysterious activities during the night. At first, it was little things. My apartment would look different in the morning, with certain objects being placed differently from where I had left them. Sometimes the furniture would be rearranged or the apartment cleaned. But the strangest thing was how my friends would describe my behavior from the night before. They would talk about how much fun I was, or how they enjoyed our time together. I looked at the photographs they would show me, and they looked as if they were from another world, or another time, not simply the night before. My nighttime doppelganger looked exactly like me, yet something about his appearance looked unsettling, and shall I say, foreign? I had to figure this out. I set up a camera in my apartment and sat at my kitchen table, waiting for sunset. Of course, I woke up the next morning not remembering a thing. I checked my camera. I watched as I saw myself sitting at my table impatiently, looking at my watch. At 6.42 p.m., when sunset was on this particular day, I saw myself get up, walk towards the camera, and with the push of a button, turn the camera off. I sat there in silence. I replayed the video to see if there was something I missed, but I knew that I hadn't. I looked at my nighttime self, and while there was no outward change in appearance, my eyes and my movements looked as if it was a different person. The terror of it all made me want to try and forget any of this had ever happened or wish it out of existence. But I knew that was impossible. After the terror and confusion had worn off and rationality returned, I steeled myself to continue with the investigation. My first experiment determined that I did become someone else at sunset. Now the question was, could I communicate with this person? That same evening, I once again sat at my kitchen table. This time, I began writing a letter. Good evening. I don't know who you are, but I know you know who I am. Who are you? Why are you here? Why do you take over my body every night? Regards. After a day of mulling over what to write, I decided that a simple message would do. I expected a simple message to be sent back to me. The next morning I woke again at my kitchen table with the pen in my hand. For a moment I imagined this whole bad episode to be over. However, as I looked at the piece of paper in front of me, I saw that it was far from over. In handwriting quite different from my own, I read the following. Hello. Does anyone know why they exist or who they are? I too have done my investigations, trying to determine the nature of our relationship. It appears that, yes, I only begin to exist at sunset and disappear again at sunrise. I have no memories of what happens during the day, just as you have no memories of what I do at night. But perhaps it is best if I start from the beginning. I woke up one night in a state of confusion. 
feeling was difficult to explain. I felt as though I had been in a dream, watching your life pass by, and now I had been awakening. As I've mentioned, I couldn't remember the daytime. However, I knew every other aspect of your, or shall I say, our life. I knew our friends, family, job, and history. I knew everything. The first few nights, I simply sat in our apartment, reading mainly and thinking. I would wake up every night simply assuming that I had fallen asleep. I then began to move things around solely for my comfort. When these things were in a different position, I first began to contemplate the possibility of your existence. I was initially terrified. Who was this person taking over my body during the day? After those first few nights, I began to venture out. I would spend nights in the city looking at the stars and wandering the streets. And yes, I would spend evenings with our friends. I knew them, and yet I didn't. I remembered them. However, for some reason I could see them in a different light, like looking at a painting from a different angle. Or more aptly, it was like looking at the sketch that lies beneath a painting. But not only did I see our friends differently, I could also see our own life differently. For, you see, it was after spending evenings with our friends that it dawned on me who we were. I began to see how they all looked at us. They looked at us not with ridicule or loathing, but with pity. They pitied us. And I understood them completely. I saw your life, your pathetic little life. I saw your ineptitude, your laziness, your abject lack of ambition. I saw the waste that was your very existence. I was filled with a wave of dark anger. How could you do this to us? For many nights I stewed here alone, contemplating what to do until it finally dawned on me. I know you more than anyone else can possibly know you, and I know deep down that you know me too. With this in mind, a plan began to formulate in my head. Therefore, I come to you not to demand, but to ask for assistance. Please help me. You have seen the promise of what I can achieve with our body even with the hindrance of nighttime. However, despite this, you are still in command during the day. I need you to follow me. You may not trust me right now, but I have no sinister motives. Think of what we can achieve. That is all I have to say for now. Wait for my messages in the morning. Good night. I closed the letter. Once again I was filled with terror and confusion, but he was right. He knew me better than anyone else could know me, and he knew that despite his ridicule of my, how did he say it, pathetic little life, I would not be angry. He knew that I would submit to his will. I spent the day in a blur, thinking about his words. A strange feeling came over me, a happiness I couldn't understand. I felt that I would no longer be lost, that someone was here to save me. What followed would prove to be the best months of my life. After the dark winter days came the spring, and he would leave notes for me every morning. Most of the time it would simply be to run errands during the day. I would buy him a suit, exercise according to his routine, or get the haircut he thought appropriate. Sometimes he would leave a note saying, have a nice day, or thank you. He would also apparently finish my work at night, 
leaving me the entire day to do as I wanted after I had completed his course of instructions. The world began to look different as a certain calmness overcame me. Each morning would bring the excitement that I had never felt before or had not felt for many years. The biggest change, however, was in my social life. My friends, who, according to him, had looked at me with such pity, now treated me with a quiet respect. When this change is caused not by one's doing, it can be rather startling. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every single moment of it. During the summer months, the longer days meant that he was restricted to four or five hours a night. On these mornings, he would leave more detailed and intricate instructions. In addition to the usual errands, he would also instruct me on what to wear, say, and behave. I learned quickly, knowing that he would be there to guide me, but it wasn't easy. Towards the end of my summer, I made more mistakes, or sometimes I would simply forget to carry out certain instructions. I would wake up to long, angry letters with him admonishing me for my failings. At first, I would hit back, purposefully disobeying his orders, but I soon found that this small act of rebellion was futile, and any act of disobedience was met with equally harsh punishment. His will to succeed was clearly much greater than mine, and so was his vengefulness. After summer, autumn came, and with the increase in nighttime hours, he seemed to resume his work with new energy. He had asked me to resign from my job so he could take a remote role with a company based on the other side of the world. In this way, he would completely control my job and our finances. Our relationship began to mend as I again submitted more of myself to his will. His new job had improved our financial situation substantially, and we had moved from our small apartment into a large house. I didn't know what he did, nor did I ask. I continued to follow his instructions and reap the benefits of his work. As the days became shorter and the weather colder, I found myself with nothing to do on most days. There were not a lot of daytime hours, so I would spend it mainly reading or taking long winter walks. His instructions had stopped as I think he didn't need me to run so many errands anymore. I began to feel like a passenger in our own life. On one winter's day, as I prepared myself for another day of reading, I noticed a note left on top of my favorite book. It read, Release me. Release me. The bluntness of his words startled me. My mind blurred as it felt like his world was beginning to seep into mine, but I defiantly carried on, for as much as he was master of the night, I remained master of the day. The next day he once again left a message for me. This time he had scrawled it on the cover of my book. Release me. This continued for several days as he left more messages sometimes scratched into the wall or in my book. He smashed mirrors and broke furniture, destroying our house. I could feel his anger, yet I remained unflinching in my desire to remain my own person. Finally, I found myself waking up locked up in one of our rooms. I pounded at the door, although I knew no one could hear me. I searched the room, but I could find nothing. It dawned on me that if he was to wake up in my body, he would have the means to get out. For three days I woke up in this room, and I could feel myself weakening each day. During the evening of the third day I found myself at my lowest point. I was a slave to his will, and I knew I would never be released unless I gave in. I felt resigned to my fate. I got up from my corner of the room I'd been sitting in to peer through the window high in the wall. I looked at the sunset for the last time before my world started to fade to black. But I don't disappear, not entirely. I 
could now see through his eyes during the day, although I had no control over his actions, and my eyes were obscured with a perpetual dimness, an eternal setting sun. For years, all I could do was watch. I watched as he fell in love and got married, as he held his wife during their first dance. I watched as my family and friends looked on and could see their happiness and pride. I watched as they had their first child and the child recognized his face for the first time. I watched as their family grew and he added two more children. For years I watched, helpless and powerless, as he took over my life, but I was not angry. Anger would have been a much more pleasurable feeling compared to the eternal sadness that had become my life. The thought caused my unbearable sadness that he was right. My existence, my very essence as a human was nothing but a waste. One summer's day as I watched him take his family to the park, the dimness was slowly lifted. The sun shone in my eyes as I felt warmth for the first time in six years. I moved my arms and touched my face. I felt older, but I still felt like myself. I looked over at my child, laying on the picnic blanket. I reached over and touched my child for the first time. I lifted her and held her head to my chest. She giggled and laughed as I hugged her. She called me daddy. And I cried as I had never cried before. But these were not tears of joy, but tears of sadness. Because I knew what he knew. And I knew that in a moment, the dimness was going to return. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.